if you want to become free, you never think of freedom, because freedom is just an idea, it doesn't exist. It is just an idea which has no substance in it. So when you want to become free, you don't think of freedom. You only look at the ropes which are binding you. You cut these ropes which are binding you, there is some sense of freedom. Then you realize there's another set of ropes binding you. You cut that, there is freedom. But then you notice there's another set. It doesn't matter how many sets of ropes are binding you, there must be a place where if you cut enough of them, nothing binds you, right? There may be, the number may be big, but still it cannot be innumerable. Isn't it? Cannot be infinite. Only freedom can be infinite. Bondage has to be limited. The very nature of bondage is limited, isn't it? Limiting is bondage. So lo bondage cannot be limitless. Only freedom can be limitless. This is not all semantics and ideas. In terms of life's experience, you don't waste your time talking about or thinking about freedom or the ultimate. You look at what's binding you now and see how to transcend this. This is growth. Right now people believe that you will not propel yourself to your fullest if you're not in competition, which is a very false idea. It's a very, very false idea. We have cultivated that in societies, that you believe you will not reach your full potential unless you're in competition, not at all true. Actually, only when a human being is in a very extended periods of joyfulness, blissfulness, he will stretch himself to the limits and do what he could do to the fullest. When he's in competition, when he's in fear of failure, he will only do little better than somebody else. You're destroying the human genius through the process of education, teaching competition. It's all about getting two marks more than your... the one who's sitting next to you. Yeah. In this mode of competition, only one can win, all others are losers, isn't it? It's a horrible way to create a society. In terms of time, one minute is one minute for me and you. Whether we do something, don't do something, sleep, awake, time is just rolling away, not waiting for anybody, isn't it? Yesterday went waste, so can we roll it back and live yesterday again? There is no such thing. There is no rewind on life, that's all I'm saying. You cannot rewind anything, it's gone. You complicate our lives to ridiculous extent, because it's just way of the world. Absolutely. There's no such thing as too much. Human, <coughs> human being is geared to do a lot. The problem is, most human beings, their own mind is against them. When your intelligence turns against you, uh, then you're finished. <laughs> so you may call it stress, you may call it anxiety, you may call it misery, madness, whatever you like. Essentially, it's your intelligence turning against you, isn't it? I love that. <laughs> is there any other reason? Right now, small things are being made big mm. because most people don't need an enemy. They're doing fine by themselves. They are self-defeating all the time. Their own thoughts, their own emotions trouble them more than the world, isn't mm. it? Mm -hmm. Mm. Why are your thoughts and emotions working against you? Mm. Should they be working for you or against you? Which for way me. is it? But, yeah. If they're working for you, you think earning, earning a living, paying a stupid rent and eating what you want is a big problem? <laughs> Earthworm and grasshopper is earning its living. With this big brain, you can't earn a living? What are you talking about? Earthworm because machine. such a big brain is working against you, that is the only problem. The only problem human beings have is, they got a big brain and the damn thing is working against them. If it is working for them, making a living, surviving in the world is not even an issue. See, in every human being, there is a certain genius. But ninety-nine percent of the people live and die without ever opening up the genius within themselves. If it has to open up, if the true potential within you have to open up, your life should come to ease. There is a whole science and technology called yoga, not just twisting and turning, approaching how to handle your body, how to handle your chemistry, how to handle your energies, how to handle your mental fluctuations, if you bring this to a certain level, you are at ease. When you are at ease, if there is this person, that person, animal, devil, whoever comes, you are at ease. You being at ease is most important. Otherwise, you will not experience life the way it is. In agitation, everything is distorted. Trying to remember for the examination means you are a bloody cheat. You understand? You just want to remember, fool people for a day and say, I am past, and then you don't know anything. You have learned deception. 
don't start your life with deception. It's not good. That's not a good foundation for your life. Just somehow getting hundred marks, just because for one day you remembered something and vomited it on the news… on the paper, is this not deception? Just defeating the purpose of education, isn't it? We know something, that's why we must move to the next class. Are you a good sleeper? Oh yes. I. See, for twenty-five years, I managed with just about two and a half to three hours of sleep. Really? A, a night? Yes. Yeah. A night? These days, on an average, I'm getting lazy sleeping four and a half hours. Wow! <laughs> you know, when my wife and I sleep nine hours. We sleep nine hours. That now. means half the life you'll sleep off. <laughs> <laughs> if I had two and a half hours sleep, I'd be sitting here like this now. No, uh, body does not need sleep, it needs restfulness. If you know how to keep yourself restful, the sleep quota will just go down. That's a good point actually, isn't it? This is a serious mistake a whole generations of people have done, that if you study, how should you study? Hard, you must study hard. If you work, how should you work? You must work hard. Why didn't they tell you, you must study joyfully? Why didn't they tell you, you must work lovingly? No, you must do everything hard and then you complain. You complain about everything in life because you're doing everything hard. There is substantial medical and scientific evidence to show you, only when you're in pleasant states of experience, does your body and your brain work at their best. Is that important? for you to perform any activity in life well, that your body and your brains are working well? Hello? Is it important? Tell me if you are stressed and anxious, does your body and brains work at their best? You need devotion towards what you're doing. If you don't have devotion, before the body, mind will complain, emotion will complain, everything will complain. No, no, no. First, body should complain, that means you're stretched physically. If your body is not feeling, life is tough, body, not mind. <laughs> if your body is not feeling life is tough, that means you're not doing anything worthwhile. Your body should be constantly stretched, it must feel it's tough. This is the main reason for depression, believe me. Any number of children that they bring to me f with all kinds of mental ailments, I just tell them first thing is some sport that they like, swimming, tennis, something and music. These two things you bring into their life, within three months, most of the children, eighty to eighty-five percent of the children will recover quite wonderfully. Because without finding expression to their emotional dimension and if without finding enough exertion, for the physical body, they are bound to become depressive. Are you scared of dying? Huh? Are you scared of dying? Not at all. Why? Not at all. I have lived a full life. <laughs> yeah. I live every day like this the last day, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> well, how do my children go to school? How do I manage my home? How do I manage this? How do I pay the bank loan? There are problems. I'm not saying there are no problems. There are problems. But the most important thing is, that you're alive, your family is alive, people that matter to you are alive, keep it that way. Because that's the most precious thing. Don't get into this mode, oh, I've lost my job, I lost everything, you've not lost everything. There's only one thing that is of immense value in your life, that is your life itself, so that is still with you. Uh, some accessories will be lost. Before you invest this life into something, you must look whether today if I invest my life into this, after twenty-five years, will it still mean a lot to me? After fifty years, will it still mean a lot to me? At the end of my life, you turn back and I look, will I be proud of this or will I be ashamed of what I'm doing right now? It doesn't matter what other people say. But you should not do anything that you will feel ashamed of, isn't it so? It doesn't matter, people say so many things. Everybody has opinion, it's their business. But you don't do something that you will feel ashamed of, then you're going turning against yourself. Somebody turns against you, you can leave them and go somewhere else. If you turn against yourself, you'll have to live with it forever. So this is all you have to look at it. Somebody… something will get you money, something will get you comfort, that's not the point. What you choose to do, will it give you a life? When I say give it… give you a life, are you just trying to make a living? 
or are you trying to make a life out of this? It's important. Only problem is you want to live like somebody else, that's an endless problem. I want to live is not a problem. I want to live like you, this is a problem. So, it is important if you consider your life as a precious life, you must make sure you make a wonderful life out of this. Whatever opens up in that direction, that is the thing you should do. But when you are under the pressure of peers, somebody is saying, I'm going to America, somebody says, I'm going to the government job, somebody says, I'm doing this. So one thing that all of you should do before you make big decisions in your life is withdraw from these pressures of peers, professors, parents, everybody. Just spend three days to one week by yourself. Look at it, what is it that you really want to do? Not under pressure from other people. What does this life want to do? Do that, it doesn't matter what other people think about. We want our children to be little better than the neighbor's children, which is a serious illness we have. <laughs> yes, our problem is our neighbor's children are already saying, three-year-old saying, I want to be doctor. <laughs> a three-year-old child, if it says, I want to be doctor, everybody is, oh, my neighbor's child, he wants to be doctor. Hey, what do you want to become? <laughs> Ah, I don't know. Yes, tough world, tough At least say something. <laughs> this is not the sickness of education system, this is the sickness which has gotten into the society. Education system is trying to cater to that. Essentially, belief means you are unwilling to admit what you do not know as I do not know. Whatever you do not know, you believe. If you believe, what it does to you is, it'll give you confidence. Confidence without clarity is a disaster. Right now, let us say, I cannot see these people, my vision is not clear. But I have great confidence, I'm going to walk through these people. You know what I will do? I'll step over everybody and go, because I'm very confident, the whole lot of people like this. If my vision is clear, I will go through this without even touching anybody. If my vision is not clear and I have no confidence, I will ask, please, can somebody show me the way? But now I have no clarity, but I have confidence. It's a disastrous process. When you become angry, is it pleasant for you or unpleasant for you? Unpleasant for you. Unpleasant for others for sure, unpleasant for yourself also. Today, medical science proves to you, when you're angry, you're actually poisoning your system. We have always known this. So, why would you want to poison yourself? It is not a conscious act. You are poisoning yourself, you are causing unpleasantness to yourself only because your mind is not taking instructions from you. It is not taking instructions from you. If it was taking instructions from you, you would have said blissfulness, isn't it? You wouldn't say anger. But now when you want to be peaceful, it is getting angry because it is not taking instructions from you. When it comes to food, one of the most important things that you must be conscious of is, on a certain day when you eat a certain type of food, whatever you eat, you must consciously notice how quickly does it digest and become a part of yourself. Any food that you eat, if it lasts over three hours, that means you've eaten bad food and that is something to be either avoided or reduced in quantity. If food moves out of your stomach bag, Within three hours, this means you're eating something that your system can handle efficiently. It may not be the best food, but your system is able to handle it. And between one meal and the next meal, if you create a clear gap of five to six hours, and in between if there is no other ingestion, you will see the cleansing process in the system on the cellular level, cleansing will happen, this cleansing on the cellular level is most important and significant for a healthful life. So every day in the night, all of you should do this before you go to bed. Last three minutes, everything that you have gathered, the body, the content of the mind, things, don't ignore small things, the small things are big things. I've seen how people are carrying their, their own private pillow, you know? Because it's very important. <laughs> so, your pillow, your footwear, if you have relationships, everything that you have gathered, keep it aside, sleep. If you sleep in that condition, you will wake up 
with much more light, with much more energy, with much more possibilities than you have imagined possible. Just sleep as life, not as a man, not as a woman, not as this and that. Keep everything down, simply. See, I'm, this is getting too easy. Just sleeping sadhana, hmm? At least this you must do. The only thing you have to learn is do whatever the hell you want, just do it well. But for every action you perform, there is a consequence. When the consequence comes your way, if you're able to joyfully go through the consequence, you can do anything you wish. But when the consequence comes, you cry. If you're that kind, then you must control your action. Now, people around me every day witness things which they can't believe. So people keep on saying, Sadhguru, are you superhuman? Are you a human being? I keep reminding them, this is not about being superhuman. This is about realizing being human is super. Let your children do something that you could not dream of. If you have achieved a certain level of success, you have taken care of bread for your children. So let them live a life where they don't have to think about their bread. That is, they don't live for their survival, they live to create something that is wonderful for everybody, for himself and for everybody else. I would say more than ninety-five, actually I think it's ninety-nine but so that I'm not wrong, at least ninety-five percent of the human energy is wasted, is simply wasted because most human beings cannot hold anything in their focus for any substantial amount of time. Otherwise, each of them would be opening up a new window, a new door to something else. Seven billion people, if they had all had their minds and consciousness focused, everything, just everything have to yield. Nothing would be unexplored, just everything. Whether you like it or you don't like it, within this body you're always alone, isn't it? Whether you do interaction or intercourse or whatever, 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 still you're alone in this body, yes or no? Hello? If you don't learn how to handle this aloneness, you have not learned anything about life. This is the most beautiful thing. The most beautiful thing about life is, nobody can get here, it's just my space. Yes or no? Isn't this the most beautiful thing? Nobody can invade me. They can capture me, they can torture me, they can do so many things, but they cannot invade me because I have a space which is just my own. Isn't this the most wonderful aspect of your life? Don't suffer that, that is the most beautiful thing. All you have to do is be a full-fledged life. Don't constipate yourself with too many ideas, philosophies, belief systems, stupid thoughts and emotions with which you get constipated and become less than who you are. No, you should not ever be less than what you can be, isn't it? You don't have to be as good as somebody else and you can never be because everybody is different. But you should not be less than what you can be. Do not worry about your future. If you do your present well, future will naturally blossom. We can only work with what's on our hands right now <laughs> You cannot work with what's on your mind. You can plan for what's on your mind, but you cannot do anything about it. You can only act in the present moment. You can only handle what is there right now. Unemployment is a curse at uh, one stage of life, but once they get employed, everybody is looking how to get unemployed because everybody is looking forward for a vacation, which is unemployment, a weekend, <laughs> which is unemployment, because uh, they are not interested in what they are doing, they are only interested in what they will get out of it. So thank God it's Friday, <laughs> you know. How much attention do you think life deserves? <laughs> That's a big question. How much attention do you think life deserves? How much? Everything that you have, isn't it? If you pay attention, everything is exotic, everything is fabulous, everything is magnificent. 
everything is a doorway to the divine. If you don't pay attention, everything is just stone and mud. Let's say you're feeling very angry, agitated and all kinds of things happening within you, you just go have a shower and come out, you feel all the nonsense kind of washed off. You can similarly give yourself a wind bath, you must see this. Suppose there's a gentle breeze flowing, you just went and stood like this. Suppose you wear thin clothes and simply stand like this, after some time you feel <laughs> Have you noticed that? Have you noticed this? You feel so clean and you want to feel like transparent and you want to fly away. Why your mind is going on with uncontrollable, endless thought is, you are identified with things that you are not. The moment you get identified with something that you are not, then mind is non-stop activity. You are identified with too many things and you are trying to stop your mind, I am telling you, if you try for a million years, it's not going to happen. It cannot happen. If you take away your wrong identifications, then you will see this moment, mind will be just like a mirror, not saying anything, just reflecting everything. That's how mind should be. Your mind as a mechanism works best only when there is clarity in it, isn't it? Your mind is not here to think up all kinds of fancy things. That's a distraction in life. Your mind is here to give you clarity and penetration into life. You must become process-oriented. If you are devoted to the process, goal will happen. We want to get to the goal without handling the process. Life does not work like that. If you want flowers in your garden, you don't have to buy perfume and go and spray to the roots. You throw filth at the roots, flowers will come, isn't it? Isn't this a process? Do you become a good gardener because you sa sit in… I, I'm sure s a whole lot of people in New York City are doing this, they sit in front of their plants every day, they meditate, flowers, flowers, flowers. Doesn't work like that. You take care of the soil, the manure, the water and the sunlight, flowers will come. Consequence is not your business, process is your business. If you do the right things with what's happening right now, consequence is coming. If you get engaged with the consequence, you will become miserable. Whether it comes or it doesn't come, both ways you will become miserable. If outside situations are good, you are also good. If outside situations are bad, you are also bad. That is not how human life should be. Human life should be like this. If I am good, everything ag around me becomes good. This should be the reality, isn't it? Right now, if things around me are whichever way, I will become that way. No, no. Human consciousness should create situations. Right now, situations are creating human consciousness. That's not the right way to shape human life. Suppose you're on your deathbed, you're going to die, maybe you lived a hundred years, but look back and see, is, has life been worthwhile? Have you done things re that really matter to you or no? Because most people get truthful only if death is imminent. Otherwise, they know how to lie to themselves and to everybody. Most people tell the truth only when you put a gun to their head, unfortunately. I'm saying don't wait for somebody else to put the gun, you put it tonight and watch. Suppose I'm going to die now, have I done things that I really worthwhile in my life? Things that I could be proud of, things that are worth spending my life upon, has my life been done this way. If you just look at this, you will make an impact on the society, whatever you do. Whatever you do, you will make an impact. The critics or whatever, somebody is uh, criticizing me or somebody is saying something, me gives… Uh, I'll become a more determined to you know, score runs also. But I'll get very… Di very disturbed very quickly also. So, I you know what uh, I should do at that time, should I reply to them? What is the most important part of your life is what's happening within you, isn't it? Yeah. Whether misery happens within you or joy happens within you, it only comes from within you, isn't yes. it? So if joy is coming from within you, why can't you have it coming all the time? If it was coming in the daily tap, I know it goes dry. Yeah. But if it's coming from within you, why can't you keep it flowing? Yeah. 
because we have not taken care of this, isn't it? How you are should never be determined by how somebody else is. Yeah. Once you allow that, you will remain a slave to somebody all your life yeah. because they will decide whether you will be happy or unhappy. My mind and your mind also largely has a boundary here and there, we may overlap a little bit. But there is no such thing as my life and your life. Have you ever blown soap bubbles or were you a serious boy even when you were in school? No. <laughs> Did you blow soap bubbles? Let's say we sit here and blow soap bubbles. You got this big bubble, I got that big bubble. Now I say, this is my bubble, that little one is yours, this is my bubble. Oop, it went. Now I don't say, this is my air, that is your air. Life is just like this. This is a living cosmos. You captured some, I captured some. How much you capture will determine the significance and the quality of your existence. I want you to understand this clearly. How much of life have you captured will determine this. You may have a big brain, you may have a huge intellect, you may have a lot of knowledge, but you will not still live a significant life. I keep seeing this even in the news channels, <coughs> international news channels from… Um, national news channels from United States. Actually, the anchor is speaking good guys and bad guys. I ca I couldn't believe this. You meet the most bad guy, whoever you think is the worst bad guy, he also thinks he is good. Hello? Yes or no? Who is bad to us, who is good to us is a context of where we are, what we are getting at that moment. Yes or no? You must all at least stop this much. Don't use such words because this is all establishing division, 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 division. Absolutism means divide, 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 divide. In the end, fight each other and die. This is all coming because we have an absolutist mind. Mind should be fluid, only then it's intelligent. The process of success. See, essentially success is a desire in every human being. You can put some fire into it and make it your passion. But if it becomes a need within you, that you must be successful, otherwise you will suffer, then you are heading for a problem, a serious problem. Our passions can turn into poison if we start becoming resentful for the non-fulfillment of those passions. When I say turning into poison, today there is substantial medical and scientific evidence to show that if you become resentful, when you resent something, when you are angry with something, when you are frustrated with something, we can medically today check we can do a little bit of blood work and show you, you are actually putting poison into your system. They're telling me over eighty percent of the content on the internet is pornography. I still don't want to believe that it is possible, but people who are in the know are telling me, Sadhguru, that's how it is. That's a sick world. Eighty percent is a sick world, not a healthy world. <laughs> so be… to be under the right kind of influence, an influence which nurtures, nurtures you towards your ultimate truth, an influence which gives you the necessary courage and strength to walk the path of integrity, because with a weak sense of integrity, nobody is ever going to be spiritual. And this must be understood that for bad things to hit you, it need not necessarily be aimed at you. If you just happen to be in the wrong type of ambience, Negative things can hit you. This is the beauty of this world. If you do the right things, whichever way, it still works. You do it crying, you do it with love, you do it with joy, you do it with hatred, you do it with anger. If you do the right thing, it works. This is the way of the world. As long as you're doing the right things, it doesn't matter how you do it, it still works. There is no such thing as only if you do it lovingly, it'll work. No, if you do it lovingly, it'll be beautiful for you, that's all. The process will be wonderful for you, otherwise it'll be misery, but it still works. If you go and water these mango plants with great distress, still it works, mangoes will come. It's just that you can't enjoy it, somebody else will eat it. If you do it very joyfully, lovingly, the first sight of the flower, you'll notice it, maybe you will get to eat it. Otherwise, you may not eat it, but it still works. So, this is the beauty of this existence. As long as you're doing the right things, it works. How you do it will decide the quality of your life, not whether it happens or not, it'll anyway happen. Is it true with you right now, as you sit here, that this body that you have gathered happened to you over a period of time? It is a accumulation. What you call as my body is just a piece of this planet. Whether you like it or not, 
one day you have to pay back. It's a loan from the planet, isn't it? So you have taken credit from Mother Earth. When the time to come back, you can either give back willingly or you can give back crying. You took loan from this planet. If you made something else out of it, when the time to give comes, you will give it consciously and joyfully and go. If you made nothing out of it, you will die miserably and you think that is normal. That is not normal. Just because you didn't make it, you think nobody can make it. This is the crown of ignorance. When people think, whatever I do not know cannot exist, this is the crown of ignorance. Peace is not the highest goal in your life, it is the most fundamental requirement. Don't ever set peace as the highest goal. If you do that, you will only rest in peace. <laughs> you must see, to be peaceful is the first thing in your life. If you want to do anything sensibly in your life, if you want to do… conduct any situation in your life sensibly, to be peaceful and happy is fundamental. Such a fundamental thing is rising to heavens these days. People think they are going to be peaceful somewhere else, not here, because you have never paid attention to this machine, never paid attention to the internal mechanism of how a human being functions, what is the basis of everything that's happening within you. It takes a little bit of attention. That's why our basic program is called as inner engineering. We have engineered the whole world the way we want it. Much comfort and convenience has come, but well-being has not come, because well-being will not come. Well-being will come only when this is engineered the way you want it, only then you will know well-being. You will always see people who wake up early in the morning are of a different quality. People who sleep late and wake up late, they are of a different quality. Have you noticed this? So, waking up early in the morning, you will see you will have a better sense of usage, at usage of time than sleeping li late night. If you sleep late and wake up early also, that's wonderful. But if you cut down your sleep, are you able to be active and alive through the day? That's a question mark. That will only happen if you enhance your energy quality. If you raise your energies in a certain way, then you will see your sleep quota will shrink. Not because you're trying to avoid sleep, simply because you need less maintenance. Less maintenance means in some way, the system is going in a more efficient way that it needs less maintenance. If any machine is working very smooth, it will need less maintenance. Life is a combination of two things, a certain amount of time and certain amount of energy. Time is rolling away. You do something, you don't do something, you're happy, you're unhappy, tick, 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 it's going away for all of us, it doesn't stop for any of us. We cannot say, today I didn't use it, let me roll it back. There's no such thing. Time is just rolling away. So the only thing that we can manage is our energy. Our energies we can manage in such a way, either it is, you know, very... makes your life very profound. These are two aspects when it comes to life. One thing is to make your experience of life very profound. Another thing is, your activity must be impactful. Life is not a competition, life is not a race. Li if life is a race, you must get to the finish line soon. I if you think life is a race, you must be at the finish line today, I, I can tell you how. <laughs> you want to go there? No. This is not a race. This is a tremendous privilege that we have come as human beings. This means our ability to experience life is of a much larger proportion than any other creature on this planet. That is the significance of who we are, yes? We can experience life in many more vivid ways than how an ant can experience, how a grasshopper can experience, how somebody else can experience. This is our privilege. Instead of experiencing life, we are trying to win the race. If you win the race, you should be in the crematorium today. The conflict is just this. You got identified with things that you are not. You are identified with many things that you are not, isn't it? Right now, let's say this vessel belongs to you. You don't just hold it as a vessel. Let us say this vessel came to you from your great-great-great-grandfather. Now this is not just a vessel, yes? You are identified with it. If I just grab this vessel and go away, you are willing to die to get this vessel, isn't it so? Because you are so identified with this vessel now, 
if I just break this vessel, your heart will break. So you just have to learn one thing, doesn't matter who comes in front of you, whoever, never look up to anybody, never look down on anybody, this is all. You just bring this one, in, one thing into you, every difference is fine. No looking up, no looking down. There was a young physician once, he went to his senior colleague and said uh, he had some problem with a certain diagnosis of a patient. Then the senior colleague said, oh, nerves and vomiting, is it? Hmm? Yes, but I don't uh, find any medical reason for him to be having nerves and vomiting. So the senior colleague suggested, you ask him if he is playing golf. If he is playing, you tell him to stop. If he says, I am not playing, ask him to play, he will become okay. Health is like that. <laughs> really. Some people are overworked and they have ill health. Most people are underworked and they have ill health today. I want you to know, it's a very brief life, that is if you're a joyful person. If you're a miserable person, of course it's a long life. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're joyful, if you live for hundred years, it's gone too quickly. If you're miserable, what a long life you will live, you know. So it's a very brief life. You should not be doing anything other than what truly matters to you, isn't it? Yes or no? But you're doing so much nonsense which doesn't mean anything to you, simply because you think you're immortal. Whichever way you judge me has absolutely no impact on me because I'm completely stoned. Only problem is you're a lousy manager. If you know how to manage this, you would be like me, always blissed out. Anybody can say what they want, anybody can do what they want, this is like this only because I have not given this privilege to anybody, that somebody can make me happy, somebody can make me unhappy, somebody can make me miserable. Right now, you are a consequence of other people's opinions. Where do you plan to go like this? Anybody can ruin you. It's very important that neither this way or that way, we listen to everybody because we could be doing something wrong. Any moment we could be doing something wrong, so we listen to everybody. But. What they say will not determine how I am, never, ever. If you are not joyful by your own nature, if you are always going around with the fear of suffering, as long as fear of suffering is there within you, you will never walk your life with full stride. It will always be half a step. Most human beings have crippled themselves simply because of fear of suffering. What will happen to me is always the question. Whatever happens, this is how I will be. If this assurance comes to you, only now you will want to scale the peaks of life and see what about it. If it happens, makes no difference to you. If it doesn't happen, makes no difference to you. That's when you would like to really explore every dimension of life. So first and foremost thing is this, that your way of being is not determined by what's around you. If you bring this one aspect to you, there is no fear of suffering. Once there is no fear of suffering, you will traverse the breadth and length of this life without hesitation. Many times in my daily life, fear stops me from doing small things and bigger things. Fear from failure, fear from maybe from rejection sometimes. How to overcome this fear? You cannot overcome something which does not exist. So, when you're not in fear, just stay like that. Because to create fear, you have to use excessive imagination. To not be in fear, you don't have to do anything. Take hundred things that you have feared, probably ninety-nine of them never happened, isn't it? Your fear is always about that which does not exist. You cannot fight or you cannot overcome that which does not exist. About peace, we must understand peace will not happen in America, Africa, India, anywhere. Peace can only happen within us and as everything is, in terms of human experience, it happens only from within us. That is true for peace also. Well, one way of putting this is, all human experience has a chemical basis to it. We must explore this, how to create a chemistry of blissfulness. This is what inner engineering is about.
if we are expecting outside situations will be all wonderful for us, no, any time they can turn around as you see right now, but outside situation is not the real thing. What's happening within us is the real thing and we can ensure that what happens within us happens the way we want it. Of course, as you say, you want peace. If peace happens, you will want joy. If joy happens, you will want blissfulness. If blissfulness happens, you will want ecstatic states of being. Well, all this is possible within the human being, if only we are willing to turn around and do what is needed within ourselves. You have come to me thinking, I'm going to give you a new religion. No, I'm not going to give you such comfort so that you can sleep well. No, I want you disturbed. Hello? I want you disturbed because if ignorance does not make you sleep less, then that's a tragedy. You're ignorant and you can sleep well. That's a tragedy. People think ignorance is bliss. No, ignorance is a tragedy. What do you think? Hello? Ignorance is the worst tragedy that human beings have always suffered and continue to suffer. Yes or no? But somebody says ignorance is bliss. All the best for them. See, today when people say, my life, you're supposed to understand they're talking about their career, they're talking about their relationships, they're talking about their car, they're talking about their home, they're talking about their dog, they're talking about something else, the accessories of life. These are all accessories of life, including your body and your mind. The life is the most precious and the most phenomenal thing happening here. But that is not, in your, not even in your experience, what are you talking about living life completely? The fear is simply because you're not living with life, you're living in your mind. Your fear is always about what's going to happen next. That means your fear is always about that which does not exist. If your fear is about the non-existent, your fear is hundred percent imaginary. If you're suffering the non-existential, we call that insanity. So, people may be in just socially accepted levels of insanity, but if you're afraid or if you're suffering anything which does not exist, it amounts to insanity, isn't it? People are always suffering, either what happened yesterday or what may happen tomorrow. So, your suffering is always about that which does not exist, simply because you're not rooted in reality, you're always rooted in your mind. Mind is… one part of it is memory, another part of it is imagination. Both of them are in one way imagination, because both of them don't exist right now. You're lost in your imagination, that's the basis of your fear. If you were rooted in reality, there would be no fear. If you have to describe yourself in one word, what will that word be? So if Sadhguru has to decide and if he has to tell me to describe himself in one word, one that… Myst apart from mystic, okay. <laughs> would you consider uh, wildlife as two words or one word? <laughs> what is the word? What, what? Wildlife. It's… for you it's one word. One word. So life… Wait. life, uncultured, uncultivated, just wild and as it is, that's me. You're very warm also. Just life, nothing else. I'm saying Relationships need not be thought in terms of, okay, it's over, I'm going to cut it off. This is a silly way of doing things. When transactions don't work slowly, there's silences, that's how it is. The wise way of handling life. <laughs> My next… Uh... Otherwise, when you cut relationships consciously like that, I'm going to cut it, you will turn friends into enemies. What is that for? Enemies need a mo lot more management than friends. People keep asking me, I keep unleashing one project after another which involves massive outlay of finance, activity, people. People say, Sadhguru, all this one after another you're doing, suppose it fails? If it fails, what to do? Huh? If everything fails, I will still die blissfully. But I don't want to die without making an attempt to create what we want to create. Why do we need gurus? Why do we need Sadhguru? <laughs> Do you drive in Delhi? Do I drive? Mm -hmm. Unlike you, <laughs> I have a fear of wheels <laughs> So if you drive in an unknown terrain… Yes. You use uh, these days a GPS. Yes. Usually a strange woman will tell you, turn right, you yes. turn right. She says, turn left, you said turn left. She says, make a U-turn, you make a U-turn. Why? Simply because you're… you're not familiar with the terrain. When you're in an unfamiliar terrain, 
it is sensible to take instructions. Are you saying gurus are the new GPS? <laughs> not new, not new. Long time ago we've been, <laughs> for a very long time, way before the GPS came. GPS means what? Guru positioning system. <laughs> there are things, mane katti nodu, madhve maadi nodu, all that stuff. What this means is, the great achievements in life is this, if you want experience of life, build a house and see, and conduct a wedding and see. These are the profound experiences of life. I think this is the dumbest way to approach life. This is what ambition means, you hold small things as too big. Getting a job, earning a living, getting to a certain place of comfort, these are not great achievements in life. A human being is capable of something far, far bigger, okay, infinitely bigger than that. So please do not constrict yourself with simple ambitions, let there be a larger vision as to what you want to create. What is a miracle is, suppose you did not know what is electricity. I came here and uh, I just pressed that part of the wall and lights come on. Who do you think I am? Suppose, you know, a thousand years ago if I had a cell phone, I could just pull out the cell phone and talk to somebody in America, you would think I'm God, isn't it? So what is a miracle is that which you do not understand, that which is not fitting into your… and your logical perception seems miraculous to you. As your logic evolves, so many things which were miracles hundred years ago are normal things in our day-to-day -day life today, isn't it? This has become like a standard chant all over the world, increasingly polarized world, increasingly polarized world. Well, I would say the world is far more democratic than ever before in the history of humanity. In the past, if you look back and see, <laughs> Anybody who was not your clan or your uh, race or your religion, people were just killing them without a question. At least now they're asking some questions and then they attempt things <laughs> See, a lot of people who are doing business, they think they're keeping accounts only for the sake of IRS. No, no. Because if you do not keep accounts, you do not know whether you're making profit or loss. That's the idea of accounts, isn't it? Whether you're moving forward or backward, to know this, you need an account book. Why don't you keep an account book? At the end of the day, just check, am I a little more joyful today than yesterday? If you had done this since you were five years of age, you would have been ecstatic by now. Profit side. I was doing a program for uh, one of the top, you know, really one of the largest multinational company in the world, top twenty-five executives, it's a two-day event. I had nine volunteers with me. Isha Foundation is a completely volunteer-run organization. And these nine volunteers were managing everything for the program and uh, on the second day, one of these executives asked me, Sadhguru, where do you get such people? Because they are always looking for attrition, you know. Where do you get such people? I said, you don't get them, you got to make them. How do you make them? I said, you have to make them fall in love with you. Oh, how do we do that? I said, first you must fall in love with them. Then they say, oh, they don't pay us for that. So that's all it is. When I was the economic forum, somebody important there asked me, Sadhguru, if we have to do one thing for you to transform this world, what is it? I said, just give me twenty-five people for five days. I will change the world in the next two to three years. They asked, who are these twenty-five people? I named the top twenty-five leaders of the top twenty-five nations in the world. I said, see, normally with ordinary people, I… two and a half days is enough to transform them <laughs> But these are politicians. So five days, I'm just taking insurance <laughs> Five days you give them to me, if the way they think and feel about everything around them, even if there's a ten percent change in the way that they are looking at the world, if they become ten percent little more inclusive, the world will change dramatically, believe me. We told you, your life is your karma. What this means is, your life is your doing. Nobody managing it from ever, anywhere else. 
Essentially, this whole movement, what I'm calling as inner engineering, is a movement from religion to responsibility. This is where we need to go, that every human being who sits here is responsible for who the hell they are and who the hell they're not. What they are and what they are not, they are taking complete responsibility for that. Only then individual human beings will live well, only then a nation will, will live well. This is a choice that a human being has, that you either become an accidental person or a conscious person. The significance of being human is that we can be a conscious life. Why we are in some way better than other creatures is not because we are more competent. No, a monkey is far more competent in catching a ball, throwing a ball, whatever, you name it. In terms of strength, we are not comparable to other creatures. Only reason is we can live consciously. We can do everything that they do. We do the same things, but we can do it consciously. So if you cannot conduct the process of your mind, emotion and body consciously, then it becomes accidental or compulsive. That is not the way a human being should go. One simple thing is, every human experience has a chemical basis to it. What you call as peace is one kind of chemistry, what you call as happiness or joy is another kind of chemistry, ecstasy is one kind of chemistry, agony is another kind of chemistry, anxiety another kind of chemistry, stress another kind of chemistry. All levels of pleasantness and unpleasantness is rooted in a certain chemical background within you. Okay. Or in other words, what you call as this is a certain chemical soup. The question is only, are you a great soup or a lousy soup? Okay <laughs> <laughs> Now, if I give soup-making ingredients to ten different people, mm. the same ingredients, ten people will not produce the same soup. Ten soups will taste in ten different ways. Though the ingredients are same, similarly all of us are made with the same ingredients. Right but see in how many different ways we made ourselves. So it's time to pay attention to soup making, <laughs> that this is a great soup, this is not a lousy soup <laughs> okay. This destiny business is a good insurance to handle your failure. Whenever you fail, destiny, it's God's will <laughs> So this has been going on for a long time. This is not the fundamental nature of this culture. In this culture, we taught you right from ancient times, your life is your karma. Did we tell you or no? Nobody told you there is a god up there who will do things to you. We always told you your life is your karma. This means your life is your making. No interstellar influence on you, it's you. Whatever, there are a million impacts on us, but what we make out of it is still us, isn't it? What is thrown at us is not in our hands. What comes our way is not in our hands, but what we make out of it is one hundred percent in our hands. If people sleep through their life in the name of comfort, in the name of security, they're wasting their life. They must go all the way. This is not my desire, it's their desire also, because today you have a desire to fulfill this. If that happens, you want the next one and the next one and the next one. If you carefully look at your desiring process itself, you will see you are not willing to settle for anything limited, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There is something within you which doesn't like boundaries, there is something within you which is longing for the ultimate always. So this is not my idea, this is not my philosophy that you should seek ultimate. You are anyway seeking ultimate in unconscious ways. I am saying, if you seek in unconscious ways, you will always remain frustrated and the chances of finding it are remote. It's better to seek what you want in a conscious way in a focused way. So people asked, you went through so many things, but you were always joyful. What is the secret of your joy? Lao Tzu said, oh, that… It's just that, every day in the morning when I woke up, I used to get a question. The question is, today, shall I be joyful or miserable? Till now, I just happen to choose joy, that's all. So, have you made your choice, I'm asking? Every day in the morning, if a question comes to you, I will come and ask you a question every day in the morning. Today, you're going to be joyful or miserable. What's your choice? You must make this choice every day. On a daily basis, you're not aware that life will end for me. And it could be today. Not to be terrified, just to be in tune with the fundamental facts of life, that it is possible 
that our lives could end today, isn't it possible? We are not intending, we are not seeking that, but it's possible, isn't it? If you miss this, then you will miss your whole life. If you do not understand that you have an expiry date and it is not even fixed like a pharmaceutical product that you have another two years to live, it could be just about any time. If you miss this one fundamental fact, you are sure to miss your whole life because everything that's vital will be tomorrow and tomorrow never happens. You need to understand your life is just a certain combination of time and energy. Energy we can manage, time you cannot manage. It's going away. As I'm talking, you're two minutes closer to the grave. Yes or no? Time you cannot manage, it's just going. You can only manage your energy, you can manage your activity, how you make use of the time you can manage, but you cannot manage time, it's slipping away, isn't it? So if you recognize that your life is just a certain amount of time and energy, you would definitely invest your energy in a way it is most meaningful to this life, isn't it? When it comes to doing things with the body, yeah. what one person can do, another person cannot do. Yeah. When it comes to the mind, what one person can do, another person cannot do. Yeah. But when it comes to the inner dimension of the life, all of us are equally competent. Okay. Nobody is better equipped than anybody else. Okay. I am not better equipped than you, okay. it's the same thing. Only thing is, I paid attention to that dimension, you did not. If you're willing to pay attention, it is as much possible for you as for anybody. I want to tell you, there is no such thing as good habit and bad habit. Habit means you are functioning unconsciously. If you are functioning unconsciously, that's a bad thing because the whole thing about being human is we are capable of doing things consciously. That is the beauty of being human, that we can do everything consciously. What an animal does unconsciously, we can do the same thing consciously. We can eat unconsciously or we can eat consciously. Everything that we can do, we can do it consciously. The moment we do something consciously, suddenly that human being looks very refined and wonderful. Just because somebody walks and speaks consciously, doesn't he become a beautiful human being? So why is it that we are trying to develop habits as if there's a good thing? Habit means fixed realities where you don't have to think. You get up in the morning and it'll happen to you. No, don't try to automize your life. That is not efficiency, that is the efficiency of the machine. This one is supposed to function intelligently and consciously. We are losing our sense about food, it's definitely time to look at what is the most suitable thing. If I go into that food, it's a very long process, but you must experiment with food, not just by the tongue, but by the body. You eat something today and see, just learn to observe how agile and how active your body feels after eating this food. If it feels like it wants to go to the grave, that's not good food. If it feels like it wants to be alive after eating this, except coffee, because that's a stimulant. If you eat food and your body feels very agile and alive, that means it's good food, body is liking it. If you eat something, it feels dull, that means it's not liking it, it's having difficulty with it, that's why it feels dull. So just on this basis, there's a much… I mean, this is a very simplistic way of putting it. The idea of affluence is you have the freedom to change the course of your life, do what you want to do. You don't have to be stuck with what you thought was the best thing when you were twenty. At twenty, you may think this is the best thing. At forty, the damn thing means nothing. If still the same… same things mean a lot to you, that means you're stuck. You're not growing, isn't it? A whole lot of people are stuck at fourteen, not even twenty. Same things, still they're excited about somebody's body part, they're still very excited <laughs> about… It's ridiculous <laughs> When you're fourteen, you're excited, I understand <laughs> When you're forty-five, fifty, sixty, you're still in the same bin. It's a tragic way to live because a sense of life is that we are able to explore as much as we can when we live here to know and experience everything possible that is there in this life. If you lived here on this planet two hundred years ago, physically, 
you would be doing at least twenty times more activity than what you're doing right now, physically, definitely, isn't it? You would have walked to this place, you would have done everything with your hands, you would be doing minimum twenty times more activity, I think I'm wrong, hundred times probably. Some of you, two hundred and fifty times. <laughs> so if you were doing that much activity, then I would have told you, take a break, take some rest. Now the body has not been used. Only by using this body you can keep it well. When you say health, you're talking about physical health. You must use this body. The more you use it, the better it gets. See, uh, the difference between uh, this extrovert or introvert is, or what these two things are is, it's like mistaking your exhalation for inhalation and inhalation for exhalation. There is no such thing as extrovert or introvert, do not classify people like that. Some people see that they need to act and reach out. Some people see there is not much need for that. So maybe they are not on the Twitter and Facebook and whatever, this doesn't mean they are introvert. They have a life of their own. We should not judge people like this. Every human being has a right to be whichever way they want. There is no anger in the world, there is anger in people's minds, individual minds. There is no such thing as anger in the world, isn't it? There is anger in you, there is anger in that person, there is anger in this person. Are you right now angry? Thank you. <laughs> right now you are not angry, that means there is no anger in this hall right now, isn't it? But you can get angry. You can get angry. Right now there is no anger in this hall, but you can get angry. So this is one thing that we have to see. Anger is not there. What we call as life energy, what is life? You can make this into anger, you can make this into love, you can make this into compassion, you can make it into frustration, you can make it into depression, you can make it whatever you want. The choice is yours. See, People we know, the most fantastic most human beings on the planet are usually not well known. Because getting known in the world is a different business. Being wonderful within you is a different business. I'm doing everything possible to marry these two. I'm asking you, do you want to be a push-start machine or a self-start machine? Self-start? Self-start means your sweetness must be turned on by you. If you want to share it, you can share it. If you don't want to share it, you don't share it. But you must be sweet for your own self, not for some… See, love is not about somebody, it's the pleasantness of your existence, isn't it? Is it not important? Forget about other people, relationship stuff. Mm. But is it not important if you sit here, you are pleasant by your own nature, somebody need not come and poke you and crank you to be pleasant? Right now what you are talking about is, three people have to crank me to make me pleasant. A very poor machine. The most beautiful thing that you can offer to people around you is you are an evolved human being. Not your money, not your wealth, not your rubbish, not your work which is going to make the difference. That being with you is a wonderful experience for people around you, your family, the people that you work with, your friends, everybody aspire to be with you because it's a wonderful experience to be with you. This is the best thing that you can ever do to any, any human being around you. That's all they aspire for. But now the problem is, you are looking for that wonderful person. Oh, I met this wonderful person. Why the hell are you not that wonderful person? Because you never paid any attention to this. You think something that's happening around you is more important than what is this. No, no, no. The quality of your life is essentially determined by the quality of what this is. How this is, that's how it'll be, wherever we put you, whether we put you in heaven or hell, the experience and the quality of your life is determined by how this is, not how the situation is. Every one of you can strive 
to become a wonderful human being and nobody can deny that to you. So I want you to do a simple process as a part of this Mahashivaratri, write down <coughs> three things. Write down three things when you go home, whatever you think makes a human being into a wonderful human being, just three things and make it a reality in your life. What you think is the highest, don't do what I want, please do what you want. In your life, if you do not do what you want, it'll become a wasted life. You don't have to do what somebody else wants, but three things that you think will make a human being into a truly wonderful human being. These three things, make it a reality. Emotion is a very powerful thing. Though people talk all intellectual nonsense, still world is driven by human emotion. Yes? Isn't it so? Who gets elected is still driven by emotion, isn't it? Who is popular in the country or in the world is still driven by emotion, isn't it? So emotion is a powerful tool. So if you can manage a steady sweetness of your emotion, you are in love with everything around you. If you are like this, people can't help it, they'll fall. This is not a trick, this is a way of being, this is an intelligent way to exist. Because whether they fall in love with you or not, your life is very pleasant and sweet. Whether somebody loves you or not doesn't make a difference. It is just that you are loving that makes your life very pleasant. There is no trick, you just be like this. Those who respond will respond, those who don't, don't. What is the problem? Parents think all the things that they could not do, they must achieve through their children. So they should have bred racehorses <laughs> They are not an extension of your ambitions, they are not and they need not be. So this is because people think they own their children. No, they are not your property. If you are very stressed, if you are bothered about something, something disturbing, you go stand under the shower for a few minutes and come out, you see a certain relief from all those things. This is not just because of cool water flowing over your body and calming your nerves or whatever, that also is happening of course. Beyond that, there is a certain cleansing of the Akashic dimension of who you are. Human beings should not be in a rush to live. The important thing is, before you try to live, you are in a place high enough so that life will roll out well for you. You live too early, then it could become an uphill task all your life. At this stage in your life, if you create a certain focus and balance within yourself, this energy will translate into something fantastic. But at this stage in your life, if you do not bring focus and balance and you earn it, let's say when you're forty, forty-five, you will not have the same energy. This is something that youth don't understand, that they think this level of energy will be there all your life. No, 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 it will pass. From the age of fourteen to thirty, there is a certain upsurge of energy. At this time, if you learn how to manage this, keep a balance and focus to your life, you bring a focus to your life, this life will function and play at a higher level of life. To function at full speed all the time, you need devotion, you need the fire of devotion. Even if you die, you must live. But when you're living, you should not be dead. Those who really lived totally, even if they are dead long time ago, they still live, isn't it, in some way? Well, we still remember Adiyogi after thousands of years because he lived so intensely. Many sages, saints like this, who lived so intensely that after a few thousand years, we still cannot forget them. They still live in our minds and hearts. In a couple of days is Mahatma Gandhi's 150th birth anniversary. See, the man still lives simply because whatever he was doing, we can agree, disagree with him on many things. But whatever he was doing, doing it absolutely without hesitation, this much must happen to you that your body, your mind, your emotion, your energies are, or not, are not an impediment in your life. They are instruments of empowerment in your life. This much you must do. For one who is unwavering in his intention, for him, liberation cannot be denied. The only reason most of the humanity goes about their life, blundering through their life, not knowing which way to go, is because they keep shifting 
the direction of their life too often. At least ninety-five percent of the human energy is waste… is simply wasted because most human beings cannot hold anything in their focus for any substantial amount of time. Otherwise, each of them would be opening up a new window, a new door to something else. Seven billion people, if they had all had their minds and consciousness focused, everything, just everything have to yield. Nothing would be unexplored, just everything. When you invest your life in doing something that you don't care for, in my opinion you must be miserable. Otherwise, what is the point of making the choices? What is the point of investing our lives in something that matters to us? Because when we invest our life in something that matters to us, it may not be recognized by the world, you may not get good marks for it, but you are investing in your life what to… to what really matters to you. Human ailments are of two different kinds. There are infectious diseases and chronic ailments. Infectious diseases happen to the body because an external organism invades the system and causes certain trouble, which has to be dealt with medication. But chronic ailment, what it means is our own body is creating the problem. The disease is being manufactured in the system. Because the problem is being generated from within, it is very important that an inner solution is found for this. Thinking and understanding that for all the problems that I have, there is an external cause and there is an external solution is a very foolish way to approach the whole process. For ailments, chronic ailments like diabetes, hypertension, cardiac ailments, asthma, allergies, obesity, eating disorders and many of these kinds which are all essentially generated from within, all these things can be quelled from within, if only we are willing to pay a certain level of attention to the innermost dimension of who we are. If you just become conscious of this one thing, that always you're conscious that I'm mortal, you don't have to think I will die today, we don't intend, we want to live as far as possible, just you know one day I will die. If you're just conscious of this one thing, you will naturally become spiritual. Every day, every moment if you remind yourself, this is a brief life, I'm mortal, one day I will end. Just do this for two days and see, you will become something truly fantastic within yourself, just this is all. <laughs> that is simply beautiful. That's all that's needed. If you want to know the value of life, just know that it's a brief happening. Life is a fabulous phenomenon for one who knows how to ride it, one who knows how to ride a wave. <laughs> you can see how fantastic and fabulous it is. One who does not learn how to ride it will get crushed by it, threatened by it. A really good wave rider, his dream would be a tsunami <laughs> What everybody thinks is great danger, he would like to ride that. So it is just a question of skill and competence. This is what spiritual sadhana is about. Spirituality is not a disability, it's a tremendous empowerment. If you do the right amount of work with yourself, you can ride any wave of life, in whichever form it comes. It is my wish and my blessing, every one of you should become wave riders. Whatever life throws at you, you should be able to ride it and know the joy of living because this is a limited amount of time. You cannot build goodwill. You have to exude goodwill. If you offer it to everybody, then it comes back to you in many ways. But you don't worry whether it comes back to you or not. This should be your way of living. This should be a way of being that you naturally include everybody in everything that you are. Some will respond, some will not respond and it's fine, it's their choice. But as far as you're concerned, there's no choice. You have fallen in love with everybody. For them, they can choose still, but after some time they'll lose their choice. They'll have no choice. If you continue to be like this, you will see after some time they have no choice at all. Initially they act like they have a choice, but after a while they'll have no choice. So don't try to build goodwill. If they want to decide and fix the goals of their life, it'll be very good if they take a break from all influence that's around them. Social influences, family influences, other influences, withdraw somewhere, sit down, meditate, bring yourself to a certain level of clarity and joy. When you're very happy and clear, 
you must decide. Not in desperation you set goals. Desperate goals that you set will mean a lot to you at that moment. Tomorrow morning you look, you don't know why you're tangled up with it. So, uh, it'll be good if you're fixing your life, it's best that you do it when you're very, very peaceful, happy and clear-headed, not influenced by anything around you, simply by yourself. Sit and decide what is it that you really want to become in your life, what is it that will be of enduring value for you, not for somebody else, for you. And you don't have to build a personality for that, you strive for that. When Gautama was asked this question, is it better to walk alone on the path or with a companion? He said, it's better to walk alone than to walk with a fool. I won't say what Gautama said, all I am saying is, it doesn't matter how you walk, as far as your spiritual process is concerned, anyway you're alone. Nobody is with you. It's only the bodily process, the material process of life which you can share with people. You come alone and you go alone, isn't it? Even if you have a twin brother or a twin sister, you still come alone and go alone, isn't it so? So when it comes to the spirit, anyway you walk alone. So don't mix that up. So that part of it you handle well, the material part of it according to your capability, to what extent you can do it, you do it. They come your way, it's wonderful. If they don't, it's all right, don't grudge them. World War One compared to what people went through in terms of wars, in terms of famines, in terms of massive cyclones, earthquakes in various geographies, different things, compared to all that, this pandemic is a softball because the result or the impact of this upon your life will largely depend on your Response. Can someone else push you off the brink? Yes, if you are on the edge, see if you are on the cliff edge, somebody can push you off with a finger. If you are three steps away, they need both their hands. If you are ten steps away, they need to… takes two people to drag you. If you are far away, no, chances of falling off the cliff doesn't arise in your life, isn't it? So the question is, where are you sitting right now? Are you sitting in that aspect of you, which I would refer to as the seat of your experience. There is a seat of your experience from where all experience is generated. If you are sitting there in control, nobody ever can drive you crazy, simply out of question. That's why I do it to myself, you know. But if you get off that seat, then yes, situations and people can push you into very complex and difficult mental situations. The only and only reason why you're unhappy is, life is not happening the way you think it should happen. That's all it is. So if life is not happening the way you think it should happen, you're unhappy. If life happens the way you think it should happen, you're happy. It's as simple as that. So if life has to happen the way you think it should happen, first of all, how you think, how much focus you think, how much stability is there in your thought and how much reverberance is there in the thought process will determine whether your thought will become a reality or is it just an empty thought. Or how you do not create any impediments for your thought by creating negative thought process. This possible, is something possible or not possible, is destroying humanity. What is possible and not possible is not your business, it's nature's business. Your business is just to strive for what you want. If you organize your mind to a certain level of organization, it in turn organizes the whole system. Your body, your emotion, your energies, everything gets organized in that direction. Once all these four dimensions of you, your physical body, your mind, your emotion and the fundamental life energies are organized in one direction, once you are like this, Anything that you wish happens without even lif lifting a little finger actually. It would help to assist it with activity, but even without doing any activity, you can still manifest what you want. If you organize these four dimensions in one direction and keep it unwavering in that direction for a certain period of time, if you do this, anything that you wish will happen. Right now, what is it that human beings are largely suffering? No great amount of suffering is coming to you from outside. 
everything is on self help booking yourself why because uh, we gave you a sharp mind if we had given you the brains of an earthworm you would also be very peaceful but to develop this level of cerebral capability took millions of years of evolution to get you here i want you to just imagine from a single celled amoeba to make you like this how much work oh huh? now you suffer this result Essentially what you're suffering is your own cerebral activity, isn't it? You have an intelligence for which you don't have a stable enough base. So it's poking you, instead of being useful to you, it is poking you simply because this base is not stable. So one thing is to create a stable base so that this intelligence works for you. I think it's best in trying to punish somebody you will only end up punishing yourself. they're doing what they want to do it's best that you see what is it that you really want with your life you don't have to react to them and do something stupid like them you just have to sit down and look at this when your illusions are broken you disillusioned right now it's a very good thing if your illusion illusions are broken that means life is bringing you closer to reality isn't it So this is an opportunity for you to sit down and see what is the nature of my life why is it see this piece of life is a complete piece of life isn't it so is it half a life are you a half a life or a full life full life why is it that it feels so incomplete that it needs another person to fill this life why is it it's time to look at it i just went for literature and this three years i went there in the beginning and they all had ready made notes the teachers they would read and everybody writing down those days fountain pens kara 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 it makes noise it just irritated me i said i don't want to listen to this kara kara noise i gave them a suggestion if you give that notes wherever you got it we will photocopy it and give it back to you we don't have to come you don't have to come then it, you know if i am there i'll ask 100 questions so they didn't like it then i made a deal with all the teachers that they'll give me attendance that was my only concern So once a month I just once a month I went to college just to check if they're keeping their part of the deal those who want to live uh, should be up to catch the the first rays of sun before it hits the planet huh you must be the first one to catch us catches the sun rays not the insects not the birds not the blades of grass you must be the first one to get it Well, just every day for next two weeks, just get the fire first rays of sun on your body and see what happens to you. You will live a different kind of life altogether. The doctors say you must sleep for eight hours a day. That is a prescription. Well, uh, I I'm not here to insult anybody, but how many of them are healthy is a question mark. All right. this maintenance of this machine depends on how it runs at what rpm it runs to put it very simply a given engine how at what rpm it runs also determines how soon it will come for service and maintenance so how to run this machine in such a way it's at ease always it's always at ease if you keep it this way and you work on your energies to a higher level of possibility you will see the recouping of the body happens very quickly what somebody does in 8 hours of sleep if you are able to do it in 3 to 4 hours of sleep 4 hours extra you got 4 hours extra per day you are way ahead of everybody else once you go to any place to prove something about yourself sickness will set in sickness of failure and success will set in for one who wants to learn there is no such thing as failure there is no such thing as success it's just a question of striving somebody may get it in one day i may get it in 10 days somebody may get it in 100 days it's just a question of striving if your interest is to learn striving itself is a learning to be able to strive relentlessly itself is a huge learning isn't it so don't try to prove anything This is a simple exercise everybody must do. At the end of the day you sit in your bed 
and look back on the whole day from the morning you got up, how you've been going around. You will see ninety percent of the time you're quite stupid. I'm being generous with percentage, believe me <laughs> If you're given little work, if you're just given little responsibility, suddenly you become so important, you become bigger than the universe suddenly. How many times you expanded beyond the size of the universe? If you look at it, you will see most of the time it's bloated. <laughs> how many times you became immortal, that is you're not conscious of your mortality? And how many times did you walk around looking at people and things around you without any sense of involvement? Just three things, you watch out. You will see, you will have to laugh through the night. Don't start crying. Just learn to laugh at your stupidity. You will see, all the rubbish you carry will turn into manure very fast. And manure is good for growth, you know. You need to understand this, especially if you have gone through tough situations in life or horrible situations in life, let's say. Is it not important that you become wiser sooner than other people? Sooner than other people who have grown up in comfort who do not know what it is to see those things, is it not very important that you should become wiser? No, instead you choose that you also become miserable because they were miserable people. Now, because you face ugly situations, will you also become ugly or you will use this as manure to blossom into your wonderful flower? This is a choice that you have. So everything that hurts us, everything that in some way uh, is negative to… in a given situation, whether you will become wise or you will become wounded is your choice. Every day in the morning, if you start your day with this simple thought in your mind, that today, wherever I go, I will create a peaceful, loving and joyful world. If you fall down hundred times in the day, what does it matter? For a committed man, there is no such thing as failure. If you fall down hundred times, hundred lessons to be learnt. If you commit yourself like this to creating what you really care for, now your mind gets organized. Once your mind gets organized, the way you think is the way you feel, your emotion will get organized. Once your thought and emotion is organized, your energies will get organized in the same direction. Once your thought, emotion and energies are organized, your very body will get organized. Once all these four are organized in one direction, your ability to create and manifest what you want is phenomenal. You are the creator in many ways. People are always thinking when it comes to education, career, choice of partners, marriage, at various points, what is the best thing to do? Let me tell you, there is no best thing to do in the world. Really, there's no best thing to do. Even if you take a very simple thing and put everything that you have into it, if you throw yourself into it, it could become a great thing. Is it the best thing? No, there is no best thing because how do you decide what is best? What I am doing is best or what you are doing is best, there's no such thing. If you throw your life into something, it can become a great thing. So don't look for best things because you'll waste your life always wondering what's the best thing. So till the end of your life, you can go on thinking what is the best thing, what is the best thing, there is no best thing. Whatever we put our heart and soul into and do it, it's a great thing. It may be a simple thing in somebody else's eyes, but in our experience it's a great thing and that's what we should do. Don't waste your life in setting up expectations because these expectations are not even yours. You're looking at your neighbor and setting expectations for yourself, it's a very very silly way of building your life because your expectations are not even yours. I'm telling you, human mind is such, let's say in Mumbai everybody had only one leg. You had actually two, but everybody has only one. They're all hopping around. You will also do that, <laughs> though you have to because you're setting up your expectations, looking at people around you. There's no need for any expectations, just enable yourself Whatever the situation allows, we'll do. Just, oh, this is all you have to do. Build your body and your mind in such a way that you can use it to the fullest capability. So whatever kind of situations arise in front of you, accordingly you act, not the fancy way you like. Now, the thing is, I'm constantly reminding people, there is only one enemy in your life, that's you. If you fix this one person, everything is fine with you. You have only one enemy, that's yourself. 
if you fix this one person, this is a wonderful life. Even if you put through the most horrible situations, either you can come out using that experience as a better human being or you can use the experience to become a horrible mess. So whenever something hurts you, <clears throat> there are two options. You can either become wounded or you can become wise, this is the choice. The more things hurt you early on in your life, the wiser you should have become, isn't it? But unfortunately, most people become wounded. This is simply because they just need an excuse to turn their own intelligence against themselves, that's all. Especially if the world around you turns against you, is it not very, very important that your intelligence stands up for you? The thing is, what you know mm. is not the problem in your life. The more you know, the better it is, okay? That's why you're trying to know. But now you're complaining, knowing is a problem, I have to unlearn. No, I wouldn't say that. Knowledge is not causing problem, you are identified with what you know, that is what is causing problem. If you learn to be not identified with what you know, all that you know, whether it is considered great knowledge or it's considered filth on the street, both are useful actually to live a life, isn't it? So knowledge is not the problem, you get identified with every bit of information that you gather, that is a problem, identity is a problem, knowledge is not the problem. So be your... somewhere when you say, I want to be like a child, you're celebrating ignorance. And I'm singing Asutoma Sadgomaya and you're saying <laughs> No, knowledge is not the problem, knowledge is not the burden, you... identity is the burden. The most important thing is, you... your intelligence is not identified with anything. Because the nature of the intellect is this, the moment you take on an identity, your uh, intellect will work hard to protect that identity. You just have to tell yourself three times, I'm an Indian. Suddenly everything Indian looks nice, everything across the border doesn't look nice. You just have to tell yourself, I'm this, and immediately it only protects that and nothing else. This is the nature of the intellect. In fact, that is the work of the intellect because intellect is a tool of survival. Intellect is not ultimate intelligence. Unfortunately, because we are too much under European influence and somebody there said, I think so I exist, we just lost it. I want you to understand this. This is one thing that human beings have not come to terms with. If they just learn to handle their mortality gracefully, life opens up in tremendous ways. Have you seen some friend or maybe it's just you going on totally wantonly, Suddenly your doctor told you, your... it looks like your kidney or your heart going down. Maybe you have... if you don't correct this, uh, maybe in six months you will die. Suddenly did you see how disciplined they became? They got up in the morning, did their yoga, ate right, did everything right. Have you seen these people? Entire life transformed. Simply because they were reminded of mortality. This sense of individuality, is the basis of everything. All the crookedness, all the evil, all the violence is simply because this is me, that's somebody else, isn't it? Yes, fundamentally, this is me, that's someone else, I don't care what that is. If I experience this is me, then nobody has to tell me how to be. Nobody has to teach me what I should do and what I should not do. If you experience everything as myself, when you experience everything as myself, then we say you're a yogi. That's what being a yogi or being in yoga means, not just turning and twisting our bodies. When you're young, even that one hour vacation should not exist in your life. Yes? Otherwise you will grow old too soon. Yes? Those who take too many vacations, they will grow old too soon. When you are young, not even five minutes vacation, this doesn't mean you are doing something, doing something, doing something. This means in one way or the other, you are constantly upgrading yourself, either with external work or internal work. But upgradation should happen to a point, wherever you stand, you stand out. This is not in competition with anybody. 
that this life must get to its full scope. See, one thing is a whole lot of people in the world go about like they're immortal. Now mortality is staring in your face like never before probably. So this is one thing that's upsetting people. We need to understand if we have to stay sensible, we have… we must be consciously aware. Every moment of our life, if we are aware that we are mortal, we will organize and plan our lives and the little time that we have and the energy that we have in the best possible way. This idea that other people die, no, 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 you and me will die. We want to complete our time and die, that's all. There's no such thing as we will not die. But everybody thinks other people die. No, 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 you and me will die, that goes for everybody. We are all mortal creatures, we are all dying kind, all right? Now with the virus, it's staring in our face, but it was always staring in our face and we were missing the point. Now people are saying suffering is an inevitable part of human life. I am asking you, is it your choice right now, this moment, Noor? This moment, is it your choice to sit here joyfully or cause some misery to yourself? Is it your choice or no? Definitely. So, it is your choice, this moment means it's your choice every moment of your life because your entire life happens in this moment, isn't it? Sure. You never experience an yesterday or a tomorrow, but people suffer what happened ten years ago, they still suffer. What may happen day after tomorrow, they already suffer. This means they're suffering human faculties, they are not suffering life. The moment you believe this is it, then there's no need for your mind. Mind is a tool for exploration, not for drawing conclusions. Unfortunately, most people are using their mind to draw conclusions. This mind is not about drawing conclusions, this is a tool for exploration. That you can continue to look at life in deeper and deeper ways, in more profound ways of experience and knowing. That's the significance of the mind. If you had to just draw conclusions, you don't need such a complex structure of mind. You don't need it. If you apply only your intellect, ignoring other aspects of your intelligence, you will get confused about every little thing in life because intellect is a cutting instrument. It's like a knife. If you want to dissect, it's a good instrument. But if you try to sew with a knife, you will be left in tatters. Well, that is what most human beings are experiencing right now, that they are using a cutting instrument to stitch, to put things together. Well, the more effort that you make, the more into bits and pieces human beings will become within themselves. When you want to do a short and quick journey, walk alone. When you want to do a long journey, walk in company. But the important thing is, who is walking with you? Not always being together is a good thing. Many times, being together can be a nuisance. <laughs> so, <clears throat> first and foremost, unless you are a twin, even then, we come alone and we go alone. If one does not know how to be by himself, or herself, then being together can be a lot of nuisance. Keep this in your mind, that you are truly a mortal, okay? Not in words, really, you could fall dead right now. Uh, you may be young, you may be old, it doesn't matter, you can fall dead right now, yes or no? Before you go to bed, sit on your bed and think this is your deathbed. You have just one more minute to live. Just look back and see. What you have done today, is it worthwhile? Just do this one simple exercise and you don't know when it really happens, whether you'll be sitting on your deathbed or lying in a hospital, all kinds of things sticking into you. Who knows how it'll happen, but enjoy this every day that you'll sit on your deathbed, look back and see today, the way I've handled these twenty-four hours, is it worthwhile? Because now I'm dying. If you do this, you will live a worthwhile life, believe me. We have to bow to these human beings who inspired thousands of people around them to stand up in a non-violent mode to a violent oppression. 
not going by an eye for an eye business. As Mahatma Gandhi said once, if we go by the principle of an eye for an eye, we will have a whole world full of blind people. Everybody keeps fooling themselves at every step in their life, thinking, what I want is I want to become an engineer, I want to become an engineer, it'll keep you busy for five, seven years. Then I want job, job, it keeps you busy for another one or two years. Then I want this kind of job, that kind of job, that keeps you busy for another eight, ten years. I want that much money, that much wealth, that keeps you busy for another twenty-five years. I want this kind of girl, that kind of girl, that kind of boy, uh, that keeps you busy for a few years. Then children will come, I want my child to become this, this, this. <laughs> well, we are preparing for your funeral. You need to understand just this. Right now, you may be giving all kinds of contexts to your life, but essentially, what you call as my life right now is just a certain combination of time and energy. As you sit here, time is rolling away for all of us. Love is what happens within you. Relationship is something that you do in the world. What you do in the world is always subject to various forces. Whatever transaction we do in the world is subject to various realities. Once you are involved in the world, something happens right, something doesn't happen right because it's a whole lot of management. People think relationships are all about love. No, relationship is an enormous amount of management. If you don't manage it, it will die. If you don't manage it, it will crash. But love is what happens within you. This is not subject to external forces. But right now, people are allowing it to be that way, unfortunately. But actually, what happens within you, the sweetness of your emotion should not be determined by somebody else. What happens within you must be determined by you. What happens in the world, you can't determine everything. You have some role, but there are so many people playing a role in that. Or if there are two people, the other person also has a fifty percent role in that. So how they will take it, what will happen, situations, variety of things are there. But but what happens within you must happen the way you want. My question is, was I right in thinking that the purpose in life is to just live it fully? One hundred percent, live it fully. But living it fully does not mean party every evening. Living it fully means before you fall dead, you must explore all dimensions of life. Nothing that's possible for a human being should go unexperienced. If you're talking about living fully in that sense, you're on the dot. But later on you added, according to my whim and fancy, we... that's a problem. Because your whims are not yours, they're social fads. Either you're doing what everybody is doing, or in reaction you're doing what nobody is doing. That's not the way to go towards a full life. But exploring life to its fullest depth and dimension is the really only purpose of life. Otherwise, what else? This self-esteem, this self-confidence, all these things unfortunately have been sold a lot on the planet. Why do you need esteem? Esteem is because you want to be little one-up on somebody else all the time. Unfortunately, our education systems were made like this right from kindergarten. Who is first, who is second, who is third? You want to be first. So your sense of happiness is only when everybody is doing worse than you. What kind of life is that? Why… why are we structuring our lives like this, that if everybody is doing badly, I will feel great? I think it's sickness. If you, all of you are doing badly, I feel great because I am number one now. No, this should go. In this world, good people are suffering more or bad people are suffering more? Good people are always suffering more. People who think they are good, they are simply a suffering. Now, first of all, how did you become good? He's not okay. She's not okay, he's not okay, he's not okay, he's not okay, she's not okay. Compared to all these people, I am a good man. From where did you get the idea that you are good, tell me? You have compared yourself with lots of people and you labeled everybody as bad and now you feel good. Somebody who thinks he is very good, in his mind, nobody in the world is okay. The more good you think you are, nobody is okay for you. People who believe they are very good people, nobody wants to go anywhere near them because they are so good. No life can happen. Your goodness is only in comparison with something else. And you establishing your, yourself as good and making all these people a totally wretched people, then I am a really good man, isn't it? Good people won't get anywhere, either in this world or in the other world. Not just being committed, you must be devoted. You must become a devotee of what you are doing. Only then the best will come out of you, you will give your best to it. Only then it may happen.
All right, even then there are question marks in the world. Whatever anybody has achieved, either as a business person or a politician or a spiritual person or a sports person or a musician or whichever arena of life you want to take, without being absolutely devoted to what they are doing, has anything truly significant happened in their life? When you make it so body-based, the interest in the body will go after some time. If you keep body as the forefront of your life, initially it may be an attraction, after some time, it doesn't matter how you are shaped, people will get bored of you, I want you to know this. So, before you make any relationship, any kind, you must establish this. In how many ways can I contribute to the other person? If this is the only goal, oh, but Sadhguru, if I go on contributing, if they don't give anything, then you don't have a relationship, you have taken marketplace into your home. If you want a genuine relationship, it must be how you can pour yourself out and doesn't matter because it's in giving, there is fulfillment, not in taking. So, it is very important that individual human beings should strive to bring clarity to every dimension of their life. If we try to run on confidence, which is motivated, either by situations or by people or by whatever we think we are going to get at the end of the race, then this motivated confidence will always come down. This is not a substitute for clarity. Clarity is the only way to walk with ease. If one has to walk through this life with ease, one needs clarity. Two thousand rupees fell. You asked for thousand, two thousand fell. Wonderful Shiva, fantastic. After ten days, oh, only two thousand rupees. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much it falls, something more, something more, something more, isn't it? Essentially, you're looking for expansion because you feel suffocated. If we keep you in the same place for too long, you feel suffocated, you want expansion. You want to be something more all the time, yes or no? Always something more. Will you settle with fulfillment? No, you will look at the other planets, you look at the new galaxies. So there is something within a human being which wants to expand limitlessly. That means it wants to be free, nothing else. Looking at this carefully, observing the nature of the life within that it wants to expand in a limitless way, the only thing it is longing for is to become boundless. That means it's seeking freedom. We must learn, understand and live knowing that in many ways, the best thing about you is you will die one day. Hello? Just see what a pest you would be if you did not die. Hello? <laughs> well, you must live a full life. Whatever is the fullest potential, you must live that. But you must die when it's time, isn't it? So, if you say death is negative, then what is positive? Immortality. That is the most idiotic thing you can do. So, it is very important to understand yoga is not about eternal life. Yoga is about sensible life. Right now, people spend a lifetime trying to learn… understand the tendencies of their own body and their mind. Sixty, seventy years of age, Still you are struggling how to handle your thought and emotion, what to do with this? By the time you're sixteen, you should know how to handle your thought and emotion, but entire life goes how to handle your own thought and emotion. These are not curses, these are the greatest boons that you have, you can bloody think and feel. Yes or no? Isn't this… aren't these the most wonderful things about a human being? You can think and feel, but this has become a huge problem. This is an unfortunate condition that a whole lot of human beings are in. In their personal experience, life is like me versus the universe. Being in competition with the universe is a stupid thing to do. That's not a competition you must get into. Me versus the universe is a bad competition to get into. So, this is why yoga 
Yoga does not mean twisting and turning your body. The word yoga means union. Right now it's me versus the universe. This is just your psychological condition. This is not the reality. Even when you feel utterly lonely, are you still breathing? So you're transacting with the world, isn't it? You only can't get along with the people around you. But atmosphere is okay with you, water is okay. You have transaction with the world. Your existence is constantly an engagement with the universe, but your mind becomes against the universe. If you create a psychological condition that you're against or you're in competition with the universe or the cosmos, obviously you will feel crushed for small things. Food means many things to many people, but essentially for the body, it's the fuel. If you put the right kind of fuel, this will be on in a certain way. If you put the wrong kind of fuel, somehow it will manage. I'm te not telling you eat this way, eat that way. Just experiment and see, all right? Just experiment and see. Tonight if you go, instead of eating whatever cooked food, just eat fruits and see, tomorrow morning you will not need an alarm bell, you will wake up before the alarm bell and you will see all these eyes will not be sticking like this, like that, you wake up instantly you're bright and alert. People do not know what it means to be at absolute ease within their body. Ninety-five percent of the people do not know this, unfortunately. Because you put the wrong kind of fuel, you can keep this body like breeze, simply it goes ahead of you, you don't have to drag it wherever you go, it must float ahead of you. You can do this just putting the right kind of fuel. Just… just try, just maintain five minutes, manage your life consciously today. You will see tomorrow morning how you will be. You will be shining, believe me <laughs> Just try this one simple sadhana in your life, all of you. Whatever conclusions you have about yourself, about the people around you, about the situations around you, just give it up tonight. Tomorrow morning just wake up and look at everything fresh. Just do this every day, at least see if you can maintain this for the first one hour after you're awake. You will see it will take lots of work. You understand? It will take lots of work, twenty-four hours of the day to look at everything fresh. If you're looking at everything fresh, you will not miss a single possibility. Everything is alive to you. Where people see nothing, you will see all kinds of things. Where people see problems, you will see possibilities in life. Do you feel lonely? Lonely? If when you're alone, if you feel lonely, obviously you're in bad company, isn't it? <laughs> Your dreams, goals and aspirations, it's good that you spend little more time on it and see, will this really mean something to you even after twenty-five years, fifty years? If you are in your deathbed, will it still mean something to you? You must look at it. Whatever you are aspiring for, whatever you are dreaming of, whatever goals you have set, will it really mean something? Because most of these goals are traps, they are just traps. You get in, it's only one way street, you can't turn back. I want you to look at this. One simplistic aspect of how it functions is, there are no subtractions and divisions in our mind. There is only addition and multiplication. If you try to do something with it, it will say one more. If you try hard, it will multiply into many more. In this mind, you don't try to identify what is positive, what is negative and try to remove it. First of all, one needs to understand this mind of yours, this body of yours, is supposed to serve you. The life that you are is important. Body and mind are vehicles that must serve us. If you sit in a vehicle, it must go where you want to go. If it goes to its own destination, what is the point of such a vehicle? It's just a nuisance. Right now, most human beings are unfortunately experiencing this fantastic possibility of human mind as a nuisance, as a troublesome thing. Well, this is the most beautiful thing you have.